Hey, Tad. Yes, Alex? Let me tell you about the worst boss fight I've ever fought in the past 10 years in Hover, Revolt of Gamers. I heard about Hover way in the past, but I barely remember. Sh I, I remember shit about it. What is Hover? Hover is a Kickstarter game made like what? Uh, the Kickstarter came up like three years ago. It was made by these three people, these fucking French people, and they wanted to kind of like not remake a game just like Jet Set Radio, but they want to kind of get that game with the same kind of like style, you know, running around, jumping off shit, yeah. spray painting all over the place, you know, that that kind of that kind of thing. Yeah, for those who don't know, Jet Set Radio's gameplay was kind of like, it, it, I think, did it come out around the same time as all the Tony Hawk games and all like those were getting a big a big boost and all that. Well, I think it did. Well, it was on the Dreamcast, and the first one was, so I would assume so, because those games were back in, like, what, PlayStation 1? was, like, the first Tony Hawk game, like, 98 or something? Yeah. But uh, Jet Set Radio is, like, it, it's kind of like that, only instead of, like, doing all the tricks, you're, like, it's, like, a weird punk Japanese style. Like, it was, it's, like, a really unique art style. It's got uh, well, it was really good music. Back when that was still kind of, like, a new thing yeah. to do. And like you still did tricks, and, you still got like your score and shit. Because this was back in the day when scores like were part of like the game, you would just go for high scores and shit on levels. But, like you, you go do missions like spray paint like X amount of things or like chase down these targets and like spray paint on their back. You can fucking jump off shit doing tricks, getting points. Uh, you can collect like these little like extra graffiti things to use. All the graffiti was done by like real graffiti artists and shit too. Like it was, this game was like really oh, good. I, I really know like, that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Fucking. Uh, I love that when you start the game up, it always says, uh, street art is still vandalism, so please don't do uh, reenact anything you see in the game. <laughs> <laughs> it does that every time you start the game up. It's like, yeah, whatever. But, uh, I really liked the game, the first one. I never actually played Future, but Future's apparently the more popular one, so I guess I just missed out on that. I'll play it one day. But, uh... So fucking Hover comes out in the Kickstarter, and they're like, we want to do this the same kind of style of game. Like, we want to fucking be, you know, jumping around cities, spray paint and shit, being like a punk and shit. So, like, I, I fucking funded, I backed it. Like, I said backed and funded at the same time. I back funded it $50 at the time. So I was like, fuck yeah, this looks sweet. So, like, uh, three years later, the game does finally come out. It comes out with, like, a beta and shit. Uh, it was fine. Like, it, well, the first it was unstable as fuck in the alpha. Then, like, holy shit, it was unplayable. But patches and patches, when it actually got into the beta phase, then it was actually pretty fun. Like, then it was actually a video game, you know? When was the, um, do you remember when the Kickstarter was announced again? What year was it? Well, it was back in, like, I was either at the end of 2013 or at the earliest of 2014. It was a while ago. No, wait, duh. It's 2017. It was fucking 2014. I remember now. Yeah, it was 2014, oh. and that was... It was, I think, like, in February 2014. It was just a little after I first started working at, at Walmart. You know, the job I no longer work at. So, like, as, as I was saying, fucking, uh... The game wasn't trying to be exact... Oh, wait, I almost forgot. It also wanted to get music made by the same guy, like, Hideki uh, something. Forgive me, I don't remember his name off the top of my head, because, you know, Japanese is really fucking hard to remember. But uh, it's the same <laughs> guy who did the music for Jet Set Radio to do a couple tracks for the game. And they did fun that. Mm -hmm. They did two songs that are really good. It's like Never Ever and uh, Heaven Up, which is like my favorite song in that game. It's fucking fantastic. So like, I played around with the betas. I really liked the game. The game's, even back then, was still pretty, pretty rough around the edges. Like, it felt like a game that was made by three people. You know what I mean? Like, you could it feel had it. That, it. It wasn't as well polished as a game that goes through an actual publisher and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Hideki Naganuma. That's, that's it. it. That's the composer for Jet Set Radio. I'm glad you were able to fact check that real fast, but, uh... Anyway, or at yeah. least Jet Set Radio Future. What's up? Okay, yeah, no, it was for both. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's, it's, it's the same guy. That's why his, uh, his official YouTube channel is called The Funky Dealer, which is one of the songs in Future. <laughs> and one of the songs used in the... MSPA fan adventure Waterworks, which is really good. Did you just fucking did you just shill a goddamn Homestuck fan creation on my goddamn episode? You son of a bitch. Okay, so as I was saying, anyway, <laughs> the game the game is uh a little bit different than Jet Set Radio. It's not about skating. It's more about parkour and shit. You have these fucking light up shoes that you that helps you like jump around and shit, and that's still pretty cool. You're just not gonna be grinding near. Well, you still grind, but you're not gonna be nearly doing the the same kind of skate tricks. You know what I mean? Because parkour is a little fucking different. Yeah. But uh, in this game, 
the story is sort of similar uh, to Jet Set Radio. Right? In Jet Set Radio, it's like big evil corporation dudes taking over, and you being the rebel punk kid, and the you know the guy who's too cool for school, uh, has got to go like fucking spray paint all over the place and be an asshole. People just be an actual delinquent and somehow save the day by doing by being rebellious. So that's what's what's, what's, what's yeah. up with this game. So this game takes place on like a futuristic city. Like on some other planet, like this is like uh, way in the future. Yeah, that's why there's like weird like alien guys right walking around the towns and shit. And uh, you are a clone uh, made in a facility because the entire planet has been kind of fucked over by clones. So like you can have like eight hundred different like guys named Jerry, and like three of them can work at Walmart, but they're not gonna actually know which Jerry's which Jerry. So Jerry could not show up to work for like three months, and they'll never know because it's like, hey, Jerry's here technically. <laughs> It's actually kind of fucking over the place. That's one of the jokes I mean, they use in the story, which I kind of like. It doesn't sound like the worst thing possible. It sounds like that's a pretty minor issue. There's just being a lot of extra clones running. They're, they're all over the place. That's that's actually their excuse of why you'll take quests from this. Like, say there's one we've seen in Blorp, who's just a little, like, blue, sque- like, little squishy-looking alien dude. You'll get missions from him in, like, random, like, different locations... But it's not the same guy, it's just a different Blorp clone. In fact, there's one where the Blorp clone is married to another Blorp clone. Because who else better to marry than yourself? It's actually funny, I like You know, that. I I mean, I take a controversial opinion on this. I just don't think I just don't think Blorp Blorps should be married to Blorps. You know, like I know that some people don't don't agree with that, but it's just my opinion. Matthias six one six one two three. It's Adam and Eve, not Blorp and Blorp. <laughs> there we go that's that's a way that's what i was i was trying to think of that yeah don't worry that, that's it. why i'm here i'm the funnier one so anyway the city is being ruled by the great administrator and his e-cops he is he's put an outlaw on all fun whatsoever and he said that you can't play video games you can't fucking run or walk too fast in certain directions. Like, there's this whole list of rules, and it's literally just no fun allowed. Again, much like Dan and Mike. So, fucking, you and a bunch of the other gamers are like, uh, this is part I know, it's fucking cringy, but like, you and the other gamers and these other fucking punks are like, nah, 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 fuck you, dude. And so you run around breaking all their shit and uh, spray painting your shitty logos all over the place and just being an asshole and doing side missions and shit. Try to overthrow the fucking great administrator. And, uh,. It's pretty good. It's you know it's just a similar story to some of my jump set radio. So you do the game. You're doing missions. You're jumping around and shit. Game you know visually, the, the city and towns they look pretty pretty okay actually. The character models I'm gonna just tell you guys right now, especially if you three people like watch this at any point, the character models look like kind of kind of like shit. Like, some of them look okay, like that one dude with like the spiky hair, he looks kind of fine. But like, when you pick Green D and like try to make a version of her, because like, let's also explain like uh, how you get extra characters, like, how do you play as Green D if she's already living right here? Well, you just make, you get her DNA kit and you make a clone of her. Like, the clone thing is to explain the the, co- the copied NPCs and, and player characters running around, because there's like an online lobby. You can all jump around like the city together. It's online, and you can like. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's a that's a. I like when games do that, where they uh, they apply the, the game some mechanics rule. to actual world logic, and that's some bullshit like Dark Souls. Like, there's another world. I mean, game that someone's playing and use this to co-op over the internet. I mean, over the worlds, where it's a yeah. little shittier. This one makes sense, and that and the clone thing actually does come up in missions and shit. Like, there's a guy named Dotello who you actually is one of the leaders of like the resistance. He has this weird like computer screen phase. He actually has a clone called Ote, who's a red version of him that gives you a mission later on in the city. And he even mentions, like, yeah, I'm a clone <laughs> to him. What, I got better missions than he does? Check this shit out. And he had to do a mission with him. It, it comes up, and I kind of okay. like it. But, uh, anyway, anyway, anyway. So, one of the things I actually like about this game is because of its online thing. So, whenever someone's doing it, if you go to the online, like, fair area... It's sort of like open worldy, where like you can just jump from like junk town and climb the like jump off of the buildings and shit and climb up into like the upper district and shit. And you'll see other players jumping around, you see their like weird neon trails following behind them and stuff. And you can actually join up with missions when they're starting one. Like say like this guy's gonna go race Greendy, a little circle will appear, and before he starts it, other people can join in into the race and shit too. And uh, it's it's actually pretty cool. You can actually make your own missions too, which is pretty fucking sweet. But uh, one of the things that sucks about this is that 
say like uh, that race with Grindy, it's not a, it's not about beating Grindy now. It's about beating that other guy. You're not really helping them. You're more of like a dark spirit because now if you win, they fail and they'll do the mission again anyway. So basically, if you want to co-op with people, you're the biggest asshole on the planet. If it's a race mission. So anyway, you do all the missions with people. You can do side missions to unlock different characters because each character has a little like like side like quest line and shit. And the main mission is about basically working your way up and getting your team because you can make a team of like four characters uh, up enough rank and like uh, notoriety to be worthy of the gamers like bigger missions. You finally go up, and here's where this game gets to the worst. Like where I just actually actively hate everything they've done with this last bit of the <laughs> game of the gameplay. It pisses me off. I hated it. Oh my god! Oh my god! Okay, okay. So just keep in mind that I actually like this game a lot. It's a lot of fun to play. I keep playing it now. It's a fucking. It's pretty good. Again, it's rough around the edges and shit. With, with a couple of things, you know, how you can like kind of clip through shit sometimes, and like turn, some character models just a little iffy. But like, the game's a lot of fun, and it's got a, so much potential that you just keep updating it and fixing the, the minor things, which they've been doing. But this right here, is a little more than a minor tweak to fix. So. The, the, the E-Cop guys I mentioned earlier, the evil like cyborg robot cops, have a big thing called the E-Prison and then the E-Tower on top of it. So you gotta infiltrate through the prison and then eventually up through the tower itself, which is a big gauntlet of like testing all your different stats. Because like, you can have like a grind, a speed, a jump stat, all this kind of shit. And they tell you to get ready for this because each one is trying to test you with these different like puzzles. Like you'll have a grind themed like speed challenge. If you don't have enough grind, you won't gain enough speed to break break through the barrier or something like that. It's testing all all your shit at once. It's like an open world uh, thing. So like you could just you could just like Breath of the Wild style, just like hey, I'm gonna go to the prison and then they oh well shit, there's kind of like a soft wall here because I can't make it. I don't yeah. have enough, you know, stats. Sort of. There, there are still some gateways that block you off for story progression because while you get, you, we had to rank up and prove your worth to, to the gamer guys. You uh, unlock these keys to unlock these fucking barriers that are like blocking the way. Like you can't go to the administrative district, which is like the like later game area, until you do enough. Sh like you get like rank like five hundred or something. Like every time you, like, you like spray paint or like break a barrier or do like a mission, you'll get like one, two, ten ranks. So once you get five hundred ranks, mm -hmm. then you can get this key and go through here. It goes by a lot quicker than you actually think, because there's so many shit. And, like, those signs, say there's, like, 17 signs to break through in an area, you'll get a shitload of extra EXP and ranks uh, if you break all the signs. But even even if you broke all 17, they'll still respawn, and you'll be able to break them for another rank. Only one rank... Oh, so you it. could just grind it. Yeah, but, like, you get half for ones you've already done. So it, 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 it gives you, like... The reason it comes back is because you can make multiple characters... But you, when your team's progression is your team progression. So say, like, you have uh, one guy, your default character, you just blitz through, like, the entire story mode. Now your new character can't do that. But, a lot, say, all that shit that just respawned there, he can still do that to get AXP and shit. It's to help you make other characters and still get them uh, levels. Again, levels go by pretty quick, mm -hmm. actually, because the max level is only, like, ten. You're, you can make, like, four, four or five teammates. Anyway, anyway, anyway. anyway. So you go, you go through the gauntlet, and I actually like the design of this gauntlet at first. I actually like the design of the E-Prison, because like, everything is just about jumping around doing these missions and shit. And, they're, and some are saying, like, you have the, the game ball mission, the delivery missions, you'll have the race missions. And you have Otello, who actually is kind of interesting, because he had like challenges. Like, you have to spray all these satellites in a time limit, so you have to like, grind around these rails and dodge like, these uh, things while, you're do while you charge up and use your spray paint can shit. He had probably the best mission, in my opinion. The best mission in the game, or like just just one of the better designed side missions. His were interesting because mm -hmm. they were a little different in terms of pacing. Because it really was like a challenge, much like this gauntlet. And like the prison was like there are missions in the prison. And there's actually a hidden character in the prison named the e you can get the e cop. You can get a good version. You can reprogram one. And there's actually a, that's actually like part of the story too because there's actually a good e cop in their base. He's like helping them work on uh, like getting through their evil security robots and shit. He's, like, helping them program stuff. Because, you know, he's a deserter. He knows how it works. It's actually really cool. But anyway, so, like, you can go through, you sneak around, like, you have to, like, tiptoe on these uh, things to not set off the, the alarms. You gotta dodge cameras and shit. It's, it, it's, it's really cool. And there's a guy who challenges you to hard races. He challenges you to a race inside the prison with these, all these, like, laser grids and shit. And if you fuck up, you'll be sent to fucking jail. And actually, this is a good way for me to explain how the jail system works. So... You have three strikes. I'm gonna take a guess and say it's um, it's like the prison in Ocarina of Time when you get caught, you just escape it, you continue on your way. Well, yes, but let me, but trust me, this is gonna come up. So, 
when you get caught by like a security box, which is like this little flying box robot, or an e-cop himself, you get three different warnings. The first warning is a standard immobilization procedure, which is literally just, he basically just tases you and you stand still for a second and stun and tells you not to do it again and leaves. It's your warning. Then, if you get caught a second time when you're still wanted, you get sent to a fucking, uh, a little, like, phone booth thing where you're supposed to stay, it's like a detention, like, chamber. You stay in there until you feel like you're ready to go back into society, which is, you know, just immediately, <laughs> just leave. <laughs> But, <laughs> but the third one, they're done with your shit, and they fucking warp you with a teleporter all the way into the middle of the ECOP prison. Now you have to fucking escape there. Or, you know, you can just log out and, and fucking log back into wherever you set your fucking spawn point to. <laughs> like me. <laughs> okay, so hold on. <laughs> so if you get caught three times, they send you to, like, this extra level that you have to traverse to get out. Which yes. is like, oh man, they that's send really you, cool. They send you all the way to the actual prison area. <laughs> and then you have to... Br I mean, that's kind of cool. It is. No, no, no. But I, I, mean... I, I, I like the prison. The prison's actually really clear because it's a big change of pace here. Because it's all about being stealthy as opposed to jumping around as fast as possible. So, the tower is the gauntlet. And this is the, the last area... Well, the first last area of the game. You gotta climb through the tower, break through barriers, with, and make sure your stats are all good enough to do this. And you're actually even rewarded because, like, there's, like, this jump puzzle. If you have a lot of jump, you can actually jump and skip past, like, two extra puzzles, too. It's really well designed. I love this area. So, after you do that, you go to the big orbital station where the admin fucking sits in, like, in space pretty much and fucking uh, watches over everything. So, you go through here and do a lot more puzzles and shit. Uh, there's more of them. It's, it's a nice area. Again, it's a mixture of being stealthy, jumping around and shit, charging up these energy things, doing all this cool shit. Then you finally get to the great admin himself. He originally challenges you to a race. Now, the race is fucking piss easy. Like, there's the race is really cool to design the track, and I hope, like, we can use that to race with, like, other players and shit. Because, like, there's all these moving things. There's these security boxes. There's fucking, like, grids and shit. Like, it looks fucking fantastic, these moving platforms. But the problem is, is that the AI is only so good, and the, the great admin's AI actually gets caught on the fucking traps himself really easily, so you can just kind of win <laughs> without, without having to think in that race. So that's, It's that's, like um, Diddy Kong Racing had uh that you had to race against like the clock dude and he was like the super secret character but like the only way you were gonna fucking win the races was if you cheated and like fucked his ai so that he just like drove into a corner and yeah. like didn't move well you don't need to cheat that's how with I did. him in the first phase but i'm glad you brought that up because here's the second fight with the great admin so he challenges you to a great ball a uh, game ball match much like how in the ending of bionicle the mask of light where they sell it with a coley match this is how you settle the fucking fate of the planet, the fate of the entire city, and I think a game ball. So game ball is just like, you jump up, you grab the ball, and you throw it to the opponent's goal. Easy. And you stop them from doing it to your goal. It's like fucking, you, you, you can carry it and run it and just throw it. There's, there's no like rules about passing or anything. You, you just pick it up and throw it. So, he, you have three people. You, it's your two AI buddies, Green D and Lip. Green D, who's like the shitty girl you race with, and Lyft, who's this really ugly looking alien dude who's really good at game ball. And then it's just the great <laughs> admin himself. But you don't actually have advantage because the way the map is set out is that you need to take this USB box and put it to the top of the satellite in order to contact the great, like, uh, spacey union to tell everyone that you're being oppressed and um, that this guy's not actually doing his, like, admin privileges. He's basically admin abuse, admin abuse! Ah! That's basically <laughs> now, the okay, did you say USB box or US beat box? Is it at least look like a boom box? No, 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 no. It's just a big box that's like, you know how a USB is? With a little USB yeah. thing on it. It's funny. It's just a big box. That's lame. It, it should have been a US beat box. No, well, it has to plug into things. But, so you have to like, climb up this whole like puzzle of a tower to score one point. But he has four trash compactors around the thing with hitboxes the size of my ass. This thing is huge. <laughs> so here's how it goes. If he gets the game ball once, he scored. Because those he can, he can literally like turn around, throw it the other direction, and it'll still score. Because there's four lower, <laughs> like, all located around the ground. You're, you're supposed to be playing at a disadvantage. But the AI of your teammates is actually worse. You, they might as well be two E-Cops, because these guys aren't actually programmed to go up the tower properly. They just jump along the side of it and throw it at the wall, because they're retarded. So if they <laughs> do that, it'll bounce off the wall, the admin will catch it, and just throw it and score it. 
So you're thinking, wow, that sounds really dumb. And yeah, it is. So here's how this goes. It's this big circle arena with the tower in the middle. Four things around it for him to score in. One thing for you to score at the top of the tower. You have to get the ball, jump off this thing, uh, jump off of one of these like uh, air vent things that launches you in the air. Jump off this robot off the wall and then and then score it. So that's really hard because not only is the great admin constantly like he's really fast, like his stats are like oh my, I'm pretty sure maxed out. But uh, your teammates are also fucking you in the ass. You're at, the odds are stacked way too against you. But to make things worse is that there are also security cameras around the tower that if you get spotted will send a security box uh, after you, which is a flying like robot. Now, the robot, if it catches you, will give you one of those three warnings. And, uh, it, but it, they usually spawn if you get too far away from them. But because you're in this arena, if one follows you, it's going to be following you for the rest of the entire fight. You'll, it'll never go away. It's going to be constantly chasing you. So if you slow down for a minute, you'll be caught. And if you get caught three times, you are sent all the way back to the prison. You need to climb up the tower and the orbital station all over again. You're okay. All the way back. So run that by me again. Run that by me one more time. Okay. Okay. So this uh, whole fucking process. Okay. So I already explained how the map works. How he says he has the four four goals that he can score, and you have only the one. His are easier to get than yours because you know he's basically cheating. But there's also security mm -hmm. cameras around the tower that if you get spotted, will send a security box after you, and if the box catches you, he'll do one of those three warnings. If it's the third warning, you will fail the mission and be sent all the way back to the prison. And that's that area I mentioned way Wait, earlier. So, 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 so the second one is just take you to the bottom of the tower, and you just restart from the bottom there. No, 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 no. You're back in the prison. So you have to get out of the prison, then go back to the tower, which is the gauntlet. Climb all the way back up the tower. Do that entire like series of puzzles again. Then go to the orbital station and do that entire series of puzzles all over again too. All that resets when you get sent to the cap prison. It is actually mm -hmm. just like Shakan the Forever Man, where you get only one chance to fight death, and if you don't, you restart the entire game over. That was... I remember that fucking game. Yeah. Shakan yeah. the Forever Man. Yeah, so... But this sounds like... Okay, so the people who made this game... Was, was, did they have the gimmick of, like, the original creator of Jet Set... You know, did they have any of that besides just the music guy? Uh, it's no, like this no. seems like a terrible idea from gameplay design wise. Like, yeah, it does, this, doesn't this, it? Okay, you know what's okay? There's only one other game. There's only one other game I could think of that has like just, just like not even taking the actual boss fight into consideration. Just like the least fun way to go about it possible, and that's Paper Mario Sticker Star because <laughs> the final boss of that game is literally like this is. I don't know why they thought this was a fun game. All right, so. To fight him, you have to use thing stickers, which, you know, you go around, you find them, they're like, you know, everything's made out of paper, except, oh, look, there's a pair of scissors, like real life scissors just kind of sitting here, and you pick it up, and then you turn it into a sticker, and you use it. But, okay, so you go and you fight Bowser, he doesn't say anything, because having Paper Bowser speak is against the law, you know, you know one of the funner characters fun. in the fucking RPG, but you don't have him speak. Anyway, so you go in there, and it's like, oh, okay, you know, you, you get, like, two hits on him. And then he goes behind a door and he puts like a band aid over it. Okay, so you cut it with the scissors. And that's it. That's the only thing you can You can only cut them with the scissors. You can't like use a fire thing. You can't, uh, you, you know, you can't cut it with a scalpel. You have to use you the scissors. You need to, uh, solve the puzzle in the exact way it's presented. Yeah, you go to the next room and then there's like, oh, there's a thing on fire. Okay, you can't use the fan or like you have to, like, you can't use any fan. You have to use the fan or you have to use like a fire extinguisher or a glass of water. You know, you can't use anything else. And then it gets to the third one. And it's like, okay, now you have to use, you know, you have to use, like, a battery. And, like, th that right there, like, is it very... Because it's like, oh, like, you're not even really solving a puzzle. It's just obvious stuff. But what happens is, okay, you, you stock up. You're ready to fight Bowser. You go in there. Luckily, you had your scissors on you. Okay? Next room. Oh. Oh, I, I, I have to get this other thing. And so you have to leave... Stock up, because every time you get a thing, you have to go and find it in the overworld or buy it in a shop. So you leave the boss, you just you just flee. You just run away from Bowser. You just run away from the final boss. Buy a bunch, of, buy six different, because every time that you run away, you have to start from the beginning again. So I run away, buy six scissors, buy six torches, you know, buy six whatever, go back to the boss, you know, get to the, get to the next section, this next quote-unquote puzzle, Oh, I don't have the thing to do this. Guess I'm gonna run away from Bowser and do it again. And like that, 
that's the only like boss fight I think I can compare to this because these both sound like fucking terrible, unfun ideas. Well, I don't more. know how this got through quality control. Don't worry, Ted. There's more to this. So the, the just way... like anyone playing it would just be like, "No, this sucks." Well, because this isn't fun. weren't added in the beta. The administrative district and the final boss were added in the release of the game. So this is basically the first time anyone's got the chance to see it and have an opinion on it. So this is online. So I actually have some live opinions of when I was in that boss room. Because here's the thing, Dad. You want to know how I knew you get sent back to the E-Prison? Because it happened to me. I was caught a third time during the fight and sent all the way back to jail. And I was getting out of the jail. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. That sucks, that's funny, but there's no way they're going to actually make me climb up the whole tower again. Like, I'm going to go to the tower and it's just going to, like, have a guy to teleport me, right? Right? Boy, there's was no I way they're going to have to go through every single layer of this Bowser fight just to find out the next sticker I need. Yeah. I'm like, that there's no way to do all of this all over again. I mean, it's 2017. Oh, I gotta do all of this all over again. Goody, my favorite. And when I was climbing up that tower, I actually was, there was a bunch of other people going up there, too, because we kind of, people were kind of beating the game around the same time, you know? There's a guy mm -hmm. who said, man, this is my fourth time being sent to the Eek prison after I was fighting the boss. And I said, holy shit, how have you not killed yourself? <laughs> like, I, I wanted to kill myself after doing it the first time. This motherfucker loves games more than I do because he was a, the, he was going for the fifth time of the fucking tower. <laughs> See, but, uh... Alex, you say that, but man, I really fucking hate Overwatch. I haven't had any fun with this stupid bullshit <laughs> forever. Alex is now playing Overwatch. Alex sends me a message. Only 47 more competitive wins to get my Arisa golden gun. It really makes you think, doesn't it? So anyway, I get up there. Uh, my second attempt at this boss fight, two people join me. And we do the mission together. I don't remember what they were playing, but I remember screenshotting them and how much I loved them. Because here's what they did to win. They cheated. They... Uh... <laughs> Here's how they found me. They immediately jumped up and like like while jumped and grabbed the game ball. And this one guy, he was using like the default like gamer like character. I don't know how he did it. I don't understand it myself. But he grinded up in the air on nothing. He was just like like <laughs> you, you know that like Legend of Zelda Wind Waker like glitch where you like corpse like fly in the air like spam uh, X or whatever to jump. That's what he looked like mm -hmm. he was doing. He was just, like, grinding on nothing, just, like, slowly, like, jittering up into the air. Like, clearly not what he was supposed to be doing. He would just fly up into the air, score, and then fall back down, and then do that again. And the fucking girl would, like, grind around on shit and stuff. I think it was playing Greeny. Would do, would do, like, the same thing, <laughs> grind off, like, other things. Like, 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 that person did it, uh, like, a little more legitimately, but was still clearly in the, in the let's cheese this fight mentality. And, like, what I did is, I was pretty much useless until I got the ball ones, is that I just fucking, uh, grabbed it, and just jumped on this little part where you grind, like, in a circle, and just stood up there for, like, the next, like, two minutes of the boss fight. Because you can't get up there and hit you. So I just, so we got, like, three, we got three points and then just lamed at the time. <laughs> it reminds me, um, there was, in Final Fantasy X, there was a, uh, a minigame where you played Blitzball. And what it was is, you know, you, you oh, get yeah, the ball, yeah, I know you talking. swim around, you can pass it, you get it to the goal. And I could not beat it. So what I did was I got a single goal and then took it and hid behind my own goal. And the AI would get fucked up and just swim around in circles for 14 minutes until we won. <laughs> that, that, that's pretty much it to do. But uh, this fight sucked. And I remember when I was fighting it, we were like, we were all complaining. And I specifically remember this random guy who was doing the fight like in a different like uh, like spot than we were just said, I hate this. And that's <laughs> that, yeah. that right there is the perfect opinion of that fight. Just some person's doing it, just saying, God, I hate this. But uh, the fight is the worst. It, it the fight is designed like shit. I can understand the idea of like oh, it's dog barking. I can understand the design of it being like it's an unfair advantage, but your AI actually makes it more unfair because they're not teammates, they're enemies. If I have never been so actively pissed off in a game where I have like slammed my desk and said, God fucking damn it, that when my ally AI picked up the ball. That's what pissed me <laughs> off. Because I knew that I'd lost. If he touched it, I'd, I'd like, like, I, I'm like, where is it? Where is it? Because I was trying to solo it at first. Like, where the fuck is it? I just see Lyft picked up the ball. I'm like, God fucking damn it! 
Because like, like, cause I just see him. Because you can see like, the game ball like kind of like far away. It shows like a little circle. I just see it jump up and then bounce off the wall. Because he jumped up and just threw it at the wall. <laughs> then the fucking Evan picked it up and threw it and then won. <laughs> it's bullshit. I fucking hated that fight. I, I was going off about how much I hated it. Everyone hates it. And hopefully they fucking change it. One, get rid of your AI. Make it a 1v1. Because they only heard it. Two, uh, honestly, just make the thing that you score in a little bit bigger. Like, I'm fine with it being an unfair advantage where he's totally cheating. And, like, you had to, like, kind of go against that and, like, jump up the walls and shit. Like, and you had to try harder than he does. That's fine. Just really get rid of the AI and maybe make him a slight bit slower to make up for that. Because fuck, he's fast. Well, he ain't fast in the race, but he's fast in this with nothing slowing him goddamn down. Fucker catches up to you and grabs the game ball out of your hand really goddamn quick. But uh, yeah, I only won because two of my uh, partners were basically just cheating. So the ending of the game is also kind of a fuck you, where it's uh, the, the guys come in and arrest him for being an asshole. Because, well, they don't arrest him for being an asshole tyrant, is that he tried to cut off the phone and it's like, hi, you'll never read at me now. And they just said, you know, cutting off the phone between the Galactic fucking Union is a crime, right? And he's like, ah, oh, shit. So they arrest him for that. And he's taken away. Like, fuck yeah, I'll have to elect a new creative administrator now. So you elect one of his clones, and he just runs the, ex the plant the exact same way. See? I told you it was part of the story. <laughs> Something about, like, yeah, we did it. We finally fixed it. Okay, now let's elect a new grand leader. It just, there he is. He just gets right back in. It, it's just him with a different colored mohawk. And he's like, all right, guys. I care deeply about this city. And you know what sucks? Video games suck. I better make it so that no one can have fun anymore. And the game repeats itself. <laughs> and that's it. And, that's it. Like, and then it's all over again. They're just like, oh man. Now we gotta do it all over again. See, that would be funny if the boss didn't piss me off so much. Like, fuck. Does, does it, it <laughs> okay? Does it change each time, or is that just like the end of the game? It's just like credits roll. Credits or can you roll, go through like, and you... dethrone the Mohawk guy? Uh, I mean, you could probably go repeat the mission. I'm not gonna fucking do it ever. I'm not gonna climb like the fucking tower <laughs> and do that shit again. Like fuck it, someone else can do it for me. Fuck that. Like they added achievements to the game like after I already beat it, and like there's an achievement to beat the game. I'm like, nope, not getting it. I'm not re getting that achievement. Mm -mm, fuck you. I'm not going back <laughs> up there unless you make that easier. I'm not fucking touching it. I had to cheat to win, man. Well, I guess my allies had to cheat for me to win. But fuck, I hated that fight. Game is fantastic. It's actually, well, yeah, it's pretty good. I like it a lot. It's a lot of fun. I, I completely liked backing it. Music's great. Gameplay, I love jumping around. Because, like, like, when you're jumping, the, is, because it's like this open world city, I love being, it's like why I like playing mm -hmm. Winston and, like, fucking Overwatch. Like, just being able to like, jump really high and fucking, like, go somewhere. You know what I mean? That's what I like. Yeah, movement. Any game that lets you move around in like a fun way is just fun to play. Look at uh, Just Cause. You have a hook shot and like a parachute. You know, just like you said with Winston, he was like the first character I played because like, oh sweet, I'm a monkey dude. I go, Whoa! I get to jump all over in the air. You know, Spider Man. Any Spider Man game, it's fun to swing around. Uh, Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction, a random ass game for the GameCube. There's a <laughs> button that. You, I think we played that. I think I showed you that game where he plays the Incredible Hulk. He just in a city and he can just like long jump off shit, run up buildings, do like just break shit. There was a mission in that game because uh, there's two areas. There was the city and then there was like the desert. And in the desert, you could pick up a cow, set it on the like he set it down, just pat its head, then you kick it. And there's a mission to see how fast, you, how far you can kick the cow. <laughs> I don't remember this actually. You could pick up a person, and you, if you wanted to throw him, he just puts his finger up and flicks him. <laughs> There's a mission to flick people as far as possible. It was great. Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction is a fucking awesome game. Go sounds, play it. It's super sounds kind fun. Of fun. But uh, yeah, anyway. There's I... a cheat code that changes every street lamp to a giant purple gorilla that when you jump, it's like, uh, it like lets you glide in the air. So you pick it up. You just pick up a street lamp, hold this giant gorilla, run up a building and jump off and just start spinning around. Well, that, that, that's back when games had cheat codes and were allowed to actually be fun. But anyway... <laughs> Because as Hover has proven, it's trying to be as unfun as fucking possible. But, uh, <laughs> the, the ending bit sucks. Love the game besides any of that last bit. If they just, if they just change that last bit. One, not send you to ECOP prison when you fail, if you get caught a third time. Like, or at the very least, like, send you to the, like, the beginning of the orbital station. 
and I had to go through that part again. I'm okay with that. I'm not. I'm okay with going through one area again, but not two, because those are both together are really long and just like sigh. You know, you don't want to do it again. I don't want to do like half the fucking game of uh, the story going over again. But uh, game's great. Fuck the last boss and fuck you. <laughs> All right, yeah, I mean, this is a little shorter. We'll... I wanted it to be a shorter episode. I always it being a shorter episode, though. They don't always have to be an hour. I guess, I guess that's true. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to go ahead and close this out. Uh, we'll put some plugs and shit. You can find us on Twitter at Let Me Tell You PD. Uh, you can find us on YouTube, iTunes, Google Play. Uh, we're going to set up our own website pretty soon. It might actually be up by the time this episode goes live on Wednesday. If it is, then it'll be in the it'll be in the show notes and all that. I'll make a big fuss about it. I'll put it, you know, I'll put it on the on the I I'll put it on the Twitter and I'll put it on the Discord. Uh, there's an email you can send uh, you can send stuff to. Uh, let me tell you about t -t 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 at gmail.com. That's let me tell you about three T's because otherwise it wouldn't fit. Uh, and then one last thing, uh, we want to give a quick shout out to uh, our Patreon people. Uh, it really helps a lot, able to let us afford actual microphones. Uh, and all this fun, fun stuff that we've got coming. I want to give a shout out to Magic Man, St uh, Stephen Finn, Jaron Kiwi, Brady Hammonds, Alba, Sean Dunsmore, No Two Hands, and Elizabeth Gutierrez. Uh, I think that'll do it for this week's episode. Uh, we will see you guys next week.